Hello there and welcome to my channel and another fountain pen video. My name is Doug and today although I did a top 10 list of my favorite fountain pens of 2019 at the beginning of January, since it's almost the end of the month I thought I should review my worst pen experiences of 2019. Sounds like fun, eh? You've heard of reach for the top? Well this isn't going to be even grab for the middle or even scrounge for the bottom. So. What are the most rancid writers, the idiots of ink, the most nauseating nibs? Well, before I come up with any more awful alliterations or putrid puns, I'll take foul fountain pens for a thousand, Alex. That is correct, Alex. He's Canadian, you know. No, no, no! So oh, this is going to be the most attention these pens will ever get from me from now on. Um, I'm going to go through the list of my worst pen experiences of 2019. Thankfully the list didn't extend to 10 and I only have 8 pens to excoriate here. And I thought I would show them up by putting my latest acquisition, the Galaxy 500 Pen BBS up on a pedestal. That may be a pen that is on the top 10 list of 2020. I'm very impressed with that pen. So let's look at what I'm not impressed with. Let's start from number eight and work our way to the top of this particular dung heap. Uh, he's doing a countdown! Coming in at number eight is a pen that was given a lot of attention in 2018 and 2019 and given some kudos by many pen reviewers. This is the Wingsung 698 Piston Filler. I thought perhaps mine was just a fluke, so I ordered a second one. The second one was worse than the first. After gaining some experience in fixing nibs and feeds and by experimenting on my pen BBS pens over the last year, and with some excellent instruction from people like Chris Rep Saik at Chris Rep 52, I'm sure I'm butchering your name, and Steph at Grand Mia Pens, both on YouTube. I worked on the first 698, replacing the nib three times and the feeds four times with nibs and feeds from Bobby on Etsy. I got the first one working relatively well and cleaned it out and gave it away as part of a party gift exchange game at Christmas time. Sorry, Jeff, I hope it works well for you. Yeah, he has told me that it's actually working very nicely for him. But this one here isn't worth the effort, so in the bin it goes. Uh, it feels cheap and it writes poorly. Next up on the list of shame is another wing sung. This one is from the other wing sung, not the first wing sung, but the second wing sung. Are you confused yet? I am. I'm confused. This is supposedly the poor man's version of the 698. This is the Wingsong 3008 piston filler, and it's much, much cheaper than the 698. The 698 was selling for around $16 US. That's why it gets on my POS list, because at that price, it should be a better pen than that. Uh, but this was only three bucks. So for three bucks, why is this on my list? I thought this was a really, really cool pen. I was all gung-ho for this model of clear piston filler. It is much, much cheaper than the 698, as I said. Uh, this one's around three bucks. So I bought four of them. Well, you get what you pay for, I guess, because although this is a cool pen, the screw in the cap rusted out. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it is very rusty. And the body cracked. Right there, all the way around. And that's without even really using it. Um, the one thing I did like about it was that, that that had a really much better stop mechanism for that piston right there just by turning it than the 698, which you had to fiddle with by pulling it out and then finding a way to push it back in again. Um, but this one has a funky section, um, sharp threads, uh, really interested, fast, interesting faceted body and that Lamy style nib that you can get and I bought a whole bunch of extra nibs for it and everything uh, to make them from fine into medium but uh, with that crack there 
and the rusty caps. These things got uninked quickly and now will probably make their way to the bin. Next, we have a pen that I was really stoked about. Okay, I'm stoked. This looks like a great one, doesn't it? I found this pen on a Chinese website catalog. I felt that I had actually discovered it because it wasn't available in the West, and I thought it looked very much like a Pelican M800. Now that I have it in my hands, it's not even close to an M800, even though I've never held an M800. Uh, and I should mention, this is the Crocodile 377 but this is more like an M200 in terms of size. But with that cap finial looking very Pelican-like and that cool crocodile on there, the photos look great. I had a, a two-tone nib with a little crocodile on it and it just looked great. And it posts with a click and I thought that was terrific too. And it's got this wonderful kind of resin uh, stripey thing happening here, which is uh, very cool. When I discovered this pen, and it wasn't available in the West, a friend on the Fountain Pen Network uh, went and contacted Bobby Pens at eBay on a private message and asked him if he could get her one. And he did, and he allowed me to buy one as well. Once we had our pens in our hands, um, he made them available on his Etsy site as well. And I'm not sure whether they're still there or not, but uh, I felt like I was an influencer. Uh, and when I did my review, I was trying very, very hard to say nice things about this pen because I felt like I had discovered it. My friend really liked her crocodile, uh, but I really, really tried to like mine and I failed. I failed to the point that now I, that I have some distance from it, I don't think it's a good pen at all. In my video review, um, I said some nice things about it, uh, especially the fact that it posted so nicely, but it back weights the pen. So that nice clicking mechanism is all for naught because there's no way you can really write with this pen. It's too long, too back heavy. And when you don't post with it, it's too short. For me to write comfortably, I have to write about here. That's sharp. That section's very small and very slippery. And the nib, I worked on it and worked on it, and there was nothing I could do to make that nib right. So it's not in the bin, per se, but it is not for me. Next is what I thought would be a Chinese Lamy 2000 killer. This is the Keiko Edge. Uh, what a laugh. This is not even close. I, again, I have not held a Lamy 2000, but uh, people rave about them. Uh, they have that macrolong finish and so forth. Well, this had a finish that was supposedly like macrolong, and uh, it had a body very much like that. Um, but this is an awful pen. Uh, and one reason was because it broke right away. You see where the cap cracked? And again, I used this to review it and then didn't use it again. So I used it for what, three days, four days? And now it's broken, and it broke very quickly. Uh, the nib isn't even close to being a uh, Lamy 2000 lookalike. It is a small number five uh, nib that wrote okay, but it's uh, an extra fine, and I'm not fond of the extra fine, and it wasn't exactly smooth. And in the hand, it's okay. It posts, and it back weights a bit. But uh, what the other part of this horrible pen is this clip is virtually unusable. I've tried putting it in my pen case a few times and that's slippery and you're, I don't know, you have to get some kind of a tool to get in there to get that out. So over into the bin that one goes. And next we have a pen in which I had real high hopes. This is the Delike New Moon 3. It's a very cool looking pocket pen uh, in a lovely color. Uh, video doesn't show off this color. It's more green than uh, it shows up on video. It shows up as a teal blue, but it's more green than blue. Um, even though it has a small number five nib, it writes very nicely, that nib, but this has a couple of strikes against it, this pen. 
making it unusable for me. It's actually a nice pen, maybe for someone else, but it's too short for me to write with, way too short. And that section is metal and very slippery. Um, so, well, maybe we'll post it. Well, it doesn't post. And even if it did post, it's too long. So it just falls right off. So the pen is unusable for me. They've come out with a new New Moon Delike recently, and I held off buying it because uh, of these issues with this one. But apparently it's a little bit different. But I'll, the jury's out on that because this one is unusable for me. Next on my list is two pens, and they're going to occupy the third from the top of the pile of crap. And these pens are by SickB. Now, I can't pronounce that. It's S-I-K-B. I'll just call them sick, uh, and not in a good way. These aren't sick pens in a good way. I got these pens because of the price. They looked good in the photo. Uh, a flat top and a cigar shape, two classic shape pens. Uh, and the finish looked kind of cool. When I got these, it is one of those experiences where you take it out of the bubble wrap and immediately think, oh, this is going in the bin. Uh, yeah, it's disappointing actually just holding it. I actually inked one of these up, uh, but even though it made a line on the page, it wasn't something I was going to write with again. Everything about this pen is awful. The section is small. It weighs about 14 grams in total. Uh, it's the flimsiest injection molded plastic you'll ever find. Um, it is worse than disposable. It is dispose it before you actually use it. I haven't disposed of it, but if it fell into the bin, I wouldn't be disappointed. Now we're getting to the absolute top piece of shit pens in my collection. Number two, in more ways than one, is a fake... Yes, you heard me. Fake Jinhao Centennial. Now, the Jinhao Centennial itself is a really nice pen that is an homage to the Parker Duofold, not a fake Parker. But this pen is a fake Jinhao copy of a copy of the Parker Duofold. Okay, I'm getting confused again. I'm confused. The auction said this was a Jinhao, but there's no branding on this pen anywhere, if you could even get it open. It's just a blank, generic, number six, two-tone nib. Um, doesn't write very well. As soon as I held this pen, I knew it was a ripoff. The cap won't open or close without difficulty. The pen is spray-painted metal, and they even missed a few spots, like right there, with their spray brush. Uh, the nib is not remarkable, it actually writes, but it feels horrible. This is total junk where the sick pens can be excused for because they're only like a buck or two. This pen was sold and is still being sold uh, by a reputable buyer on eBay, Easy Buy, for $14 US. I mean, get the <laughs> out of town. This is this is horrible. It has a really cool feature on it. The back of this thing opens up and you can actually fill the pen without opening the, the section. You can turn the, the, the converter inside. A viewer actually clued me into that. Uh, other pens should try that. But this is a fake, uh, fake of a Jinhao and a Jinhao deserves better than that. But Jinhao must be doing something right, as one of my viewers said, if uh, other companies are starting to copy them. A total piece of crap. And now for the pinnacle of excrement, the most putrid of pens, the foulest fountain pen for 2019. Ta-da! It looks nice, doesn't it? This is a fake Bauer. So Jinhao was getting copies, now Bauer is getting copies. This is supposedly a Bauer 701. It's not. I knew the instant I took this out of its speed pack that this was a fake and a ripoff. 
It is a good thing it was only $2.68 US. The original auction had a photo of a partially hooded nib that looked very cool for the three bucks. So I was gonna bite. And I opened it up and there we have a five and a half size nib uh, with no branding on it. And it's not even close to being partially hooded. Doesn't look anything like the pen that I had ordered. And so I wrote the seller and got a refund and I kept the pen. Also has a, a funky non-finned feed. How do you say that? Non-finned feed on it as well. So I haven't even put any ink in this pen. I just keep it here as a reminder of what an idiot I am sometimes. How sweet to be an idiot. I think this pen made the top of my piece of shit list because not only was it the wrong pen, it is a fake of a Bauer and I like all of my Bauer pens. And the fact that they're selling this fake right now on eBay for, wait for it, wait for it, as much as $22.26, including shipping. Are you <coughs> kidding me for this piece of crap? So buyer beware. Well, that's my list, folks. No doubt 2020 will bring more bonehead purchases from yours truly and disappointments, but hopefully the good will outweigh the bad. Thanks so much for watching, and if you liked this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to hit that button so you get a notification when I post a new video. All the best to you in 2020, and that's all she wrote. Ooh.